in Ableton, whenever you open it up, it's going to have this window right here. It's going to have the trigger window. This is very good to work on if you want, you know, to make loops and just listen to it over and over again to make sure those are the sounds you want in there. But the one thing you have to know before this, this is the loop section, this is the trigger section. You press tab. Tab. And it goes to the other section. Or you see this up in the right hand corner underneath the D. This is the button you can press, which is the same as tab. And this will take you to the arrangement section. This is where you can put all of your files, any kind of files, and you can load it in sequence wherever you want it. Say, for example, you have this conga here, you have this. You can put it where you want it in time, and that's that's where you play your your music. You know? So yeah. Um, okay, so just remember, tab will get you to the different sides. I suggest this arrangement view. I suggest this for just starting out. I suggest this to just play around and start seeing what you can do. Maybe take some loops and you put them in here and you can start practicing arranging your audio files. No matter if you are doing it for film or music, production, or whatever you would like, remember you can put this in here and it will just... This is where you insert MIDI files to make your own patterns. You see audio files here, MIDI files here. Audio, MIDI, audio, MIDI. Audio files, you can't click in it and do anything because you need to drag some sounds in here. So this is where it shows loops and you can click here and this is how you can make different MIDI tracks, patterns of whatever you want. So you can put an instrument there but MIDI, you can click there and create whatever patterns you would like or add pre-made MIDI files into there. Which effects are here? Sounds, drum pattern, or drum kit, any instruments, and then there's effects for audio and for MIDI. MIDI effects will only work if there's an instrument inside of the MIDI pattern. Plugins. This is where you'll find different plugins that you have. Maybe some people have um, a mini Moog, or maybe some people have you know, a Massive or a Serum. That's the best one. That's the Serum is my favorite plugin. I really suggest you get that. And you can actually rent it for subscription. And you pay every month and it goes towards you getting it once you pay it off. Right here, we have all of the samples that I loaded. This is the ones that I loaded up to Ableton, which will always be here to your left. And down here, we'll have your folders that you add. You go to add folder. And you keep a, um, I suggest keep a folder on your desktop or in your hard drive, preferably your desktop if you're working with this computer that you have. And you make a folder called sound files for Ableton or whatever you want to call it in any packs and things you download online. And any free packs you get, like any like thing from Splice, put all of them in there, add the folder, and then you'll have them all here. And you can go through and you just have so many different things. There's so many free ones online. I suggest you look for them. Ski Phonic Sounds has some amazing ones. They have a lot of ones that have MIDI patterns, 
audio files, loops, um, but I suggest Splice. Amazing. Do you have your packs? If you got any packs from from like Ableton.com, then you're gonna find them over here. We can start here and do the first thing by figuring out also which tempo you would like. Depending on which tempo you want, uh, we'll keep it at 120. We'll keep it like a standard, standard pace. This is like in the middle of what people do. Um, I, I can't really talk too much to the tempo, but you'll see once you start making your music, which genre you have, you have to do it by a specific tempo. That's almost how it's created. That's how it's in their own genre. So we'll try MIDI patterns first to show you guys how I like to create music. Um, once again, this is still just a simple, simple showing, but okay, so C3 is always going to be the exact sound that you put in. Go above it, it's a higher note. Go below it, it's a lower note. You'll see more to that once I start playing. Okay, I just put in two now three notes wherever I'd like. And if you just double click, it will put the note in there for you. But if not, you have to drag it out with this here. You see, so I can put something there as well. Make it a higher note. Okay, so you double click on your pattern and press play. You see that it's working. It's playing down here. You can see the the recording. It's not actually recording, but it's playing through. You see on this little loop here, it's playing through. But what's not, nothing's playing exactly because you need to click on MIDI, the title up here, and you need to add a sound. So I'm gonna go by going into sounds and show you a little bit what Ableton has. One of my favorite things to do is find one of my favorite instruments I like to start with first. Normally, I can try spacious choir voice. So you come here and you find it. You can click on these by just listening to what it could sound like. These are voices. It has synth, synth lead, strings, piano, pad, mallets, guitar, all of these. I choose spatial choir and double click make sure that this red record button down here is on always make sure of that whenever you're using any of these instruments or you can be changing instruments over here and you don't want that so we hear this this is what the sound is like with this pattern right here and now you can change the sound to anything you'd like. Okay, so I can't explain too much about sound design right now, but I'll keep it. There's one sound. Next sound, I'll go to drums. And I have a pre-made drum kit called Courtesy Trap. And I have to make sure the track is encoded to record with the red here. Like I said, drag this in here. Now, I have my sounds. With, but you will have to make your own drum pattern or get drum patterns which Ableton gives you many great ones, and you can double click on them, and it will have these. Okay, I'll stop that for now. It may not sound too good to you, but once you get the other sounds in, you start realizing when something sounds good, and you really enjoy it. So just be patient. I'm just trying to show you how to do certain things. So we're gonna try, I, this is a drum pad and this has all the instruments, kick, chant, snap, house, um, not house, I'm sorry, uh, snare, uh, clap, 
hi-hats. I just made a sample sound or pattern of what I want to hear, and I'll press play here on this. Click on here to hear the drum pattern that I just created right here, and we'll see what it sounds like at 120 beats per minute. Okay, so we have this here. I added the kick, hi-hats, and a, just a, a snare, or we can use this one. You can use both and layer them and make it sound amazing. Then you can press play on the other. Now I'm going to make a second pattern. And I'm going to make it double the time down here and just show you what a different pattern could sound like. And you can click it or I can inverse it. Press stop. Now I can create another drum track and I copied it and now I can just change where I want things and make it a new pattern. Turn down the volume on that, sorry guys. And then I'll add an audio track. I'll look for 120 and go in samples and find something that's at 120 beats per minute. Deep house. Here. And you guys see, here's, I'm just making a simple beat. 